Hey everybody, this is William Green and I am here with a live type update. I'm not doing a voiceover this time, so this is live, this is raw. And I'm here in my basement and I want to show you where my green pets are going to be growing this fall and this winter. Uh, last year you noticed that they were in the sunroom, which is of course a beautiful place to, to grow plants, but that is not an option for me to grow my plants there this year, so this is my new project. This is the green room and the green room is where my green pets will be growing and hopefully blooming over the next few months. So without further ado let's get inside there and see what it looks like. Here we go. Alright here we are. This is where my green pets are growing. Look at them all. Now this of course is not everybody, but this is a large majority. There are still several that are still outside. Um, outdoor temperatures haven't gone completely into the unacceptable range, but they are pretty chilly at night. High mid 40s uh, Fahrenheit, and that's under 10 degrees C. So a lot of these plants, I just felt more comfortable keeping them in a, in a warm place. So they've been moved. Now I realize it's not the prettiest setup. Uh, it's not a beautiful room by any chance or by any means, but it certainly is. I think it's going to be good enough uh, for my plants to, to do okay in. Um, I moved all my stuff in here, just I've moved them in here over the past few days. And um, one of the first things that I've noticed is that it's drier than I expected. Now this room uh, two of the walls are made of wood and then the other two walls are concrete and so what I did was I lined the walls with styrofoam sheets to kind of insulate because I think as, as winter moves in it's going to be quite cold. Uh, now these wooden walls, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with these. I might uh, continue putting styrofoam like I did here in between the joists but um, in any case uh, it's it's not as humid in here as I thought it would be I thought once I moved everything in here and started watering that the humidity would be up in the 80 percent 80 percent but as you can see it's it's only in the high 50s so um, that's actually really good one of the main concerns that I have about growing indoors is fungus, rot, pests, all this kind of stuff. It's going to be, everything's kind of crowded in here together, so um, I'm a little bit worried about that, but I think that if we're on the dry side, it's actually going to be a good thing because I, I've, I'm hoping that there's going to be less chance of rot and um, fungus uh, problems if the humidity is not too high. All right, let's talk a little bit about the light. The light is a 400 watt metal halide conversion bulb. It's called a metal ace made by Hortilux. And it gives about 120 lumens per watt. So this is one of the, if not the most efficient way to get lights, lights to your plants based on wattage. It's just one bulb and I hesitate, well I guess you can see it kind of, it's very 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 bright. Um, if you look at the box it actually gives you the spectrum. Where is it? Here it is. This is the spectrum of light that it puts out, put against the photos, uh, photosynthetic curve, the plant sensitivity curve. So you can see that this light produces mostly blue and yellow light but those are both usable by the plants and so the, the color that you see given off by the plants here it's not it's not the same that they would look like under nat natural daylight because this is an artificial bulb and it's not a uh, it's not meant to reproduce sunlight but it's meant to maximize vegetative growth so yeah this is a uh, I, one thing that I actually noticed once I put the plants in here was within a few days I could tell that the plants were actually growing faster. Like you can see this little new uh, leaf poking out of this uh, prime child. This, this leaf just poked out in the past few days. I mean it's, orchids don't grow quickly but if, you, if you're watching your orchids every day you definitely notice that things are, are moving more quickly. So that's a good thing. 
As far as watering goes, um, I actually bought one of these uh, tank sprayers that you use for pesticides or um, herbicide. And the thing is, when you buy them new, they've not had anything bad in them, so you can use them for just plain old water. So I bought it, it's a, a gallon capacity, which is really handy when you're mi mixing any kind of pesticides or fertilizers because most of them you mix per gallon. And you just, uh, you know, you use the little pump here, you pump it up, you get the pressure in there, and then you spray, look at that, and you got water. It's almost like a little hose, right? So that's great. It's going to work really, really well. And then sometimes if I just want to spray water everywhere, I can do that and kind of get, get humidity, get the humidity out. But like I said, it, it dries very quickly in here. So I was concerned that things were going to be too wet and damp, but that, that doesn't look like it's going to be the case. I think things are actually going to be, um, it's going to be harder to keep it really humid in here than it is going to be to... To, to keep it dry. I'm not going to spend a whole lot more time talking about the setup. Uh, one, because this is completely experimental and it's only been uh, in, in operation for about a week. So I, I don't know if any of this is going to stay the same. I don't know what's going to change. This might work great all winter or I might start developing problems very, very shortly and have to change everything around. So I'm not going to go into too much detail until I feel a little bit more comfortable sharing, you know, my thoughts on, on how everything's going to work. But um, let's take a look at the plants that are in here. Uh, the, there are several that are in bud and uh, hopefully we're going to see them bloom in the next few weeks. This is my Bulbophyllum lovely Elizabeth and I'm really excited about her. She's got two spikes uh, showing up and they're starting to put some length on them now and you're starting to be able to see the the color of the spikes. It's a little bit blurry. Isn't this exciting? The buds on my uh, Catlia type, this Brassocatanth Little Mermaid, there are five buds on it this year. There were four last year, so I guess we're doing better, slightly better. And uh, these are growing nice and steadily, maybe blooming in the next two or three weeks. Bulbo Medusa has also got several little uh, spikes poking out, and I've counted a few of them. I've counted up to eight. There might be a few more. Last year's bloom was, I think it was seven or eight at the same time. I'm not sure if these will all bloom at the same time, but it looks like this year's show is going to be nice, and that's what I was hoping for. One plant that I wasn't sure if it would bloom or not is this Fal Schilleriana. Um, I really love this plant. I go on and on about the leaves, but look at this. Look, look, look at the base of the spike or the base of the plant here. Look at that. It looks like there's a spike emerging. That is so exciting. This is supposed to be a fragrant Phalaenopsis. So, if it continues on this path, maybe we'll have some blooms in a, in a few months, and hopefully they'll have a wonderful rosy smell to them. And last but not least, this little catacetum type was a recent acquisition. I just got it in July, but it did grow a spike, and uh, it looks like it's, it's got buds on it. Let's get a little bit closer so I can show you what I'm talking about. Yes, yes, look at this, look at this. Um, I think I've counted about, I guess, five, five little buds. Now, something that concerns me a little bit is that they are... They're kind of yellow. The buds themselves have kind of a yellowish color. And I don't know, maybe those of you who have grown this plant before can tell me if that's normal or if my buds are blasting. I don't know. But normally when buds, like on a Phalaenopsis, if the buds turn yellow, it means they're gonna fall off. So I don't know, they, they have a really yellow cast to them. So we'll see. All right, everyone, that is it for this week. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking on my green plants. 
Um, in future episodes this winter, we will definitely be talking more about the different types of high intensity ditch, discharge lights, uh, the metal halide and the high pressure sodium. So we will definitely address that because I do have both systems here. Um, but right now we're just kind of in a preliminary phase and we're just uh, experimenting to make sure that this is going to work and, and that these plants actually are going to survive the winter. The goal for this winter is survival only. I'm not placing any higher goals than that. I just want to make sure that we can get through the winter. It's going to be seven months indoors, so I, I need to make sure that this setup will work and that the plants will come out healthy at the other end of that in May when I take them back outside. So stay tuned. Uh, thanks, ag thanks again for joining me. Uh, I'm William Green and we'll see you next time right here on My Green Pets.